In this video, we're going to answer the question, what is a base feature? And we're going to try to answer the question, why you might use it in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're going to cover the topic of base feature. Now, if you haven't used a base feature before, you might not have any idea what it is. So we're going to try to talk about that a little bit. Now, I had plans to do a big video talking about all the different workflows in Fusion 360, but honestly, there's a lot of them, and it's complicated. It's very complicated. So I want to talk about just a couple of the main things that you can do in Fusion 360. Now, at the very top level, we have capturing design history. This is when we have a timeline of all the sketches and features we use to create our parts. The second way is to turn that off and not capture design history. This is more of a traditional direct modeling mode where we don't really care about things like the sketches or the features. We're going to be continuing to modify the bodies and solids directly. There are some benefits to doing a direct modeling approach where we're not capturing history in the context of forms design. And we've talked about that in another video. I'll mention it here, but we're not going to go into great detail. The main thing I want to cover is the base feature. Now, what the base feature is and why we might want to use it. So first, let's take a look at this design. We have a couple of components. We have a rim, we have a tire, we have a spindle. And when we have components in Fusion 360, we can see in the timeline that a component was created or that bodies were converted to components. I have a history of all of the different things that were used to create this. So I can go back and change things like the profile of the rim, the profile of the tire, anything that was done previously to make adjustments to this design. Now, this is considered parametric modeling. We have these parameters that are used to drive our design. This is a traditional modeling approach and has been around for many years. Programs like Inventor and SolidWorks are some of the main ones that use this workflow. Fusion 360 is slightly different because it gives you the option to determine your workflow, whether or not you want to capture the history or if you want to turn it off. But there are some associated problems with turning that history off. For example, in this design, if I happen to go down to the gear icon in the bottom right and turn off capture history, if I continue, all the history is gone. I still have the tire, I still have the rim, and I still have the spindle, but a couple of things happen. One, I can't go back and make adjustments to those original shapes. And two, if you take a look in the top of our toolbar section, we no longer have the capture position or revert. Now, this is an important aspect of why you might want to use a base feature. So I'm going to do undo to put all those components back. And if I'm lucky, I can undo past the point of turning off that capture history. Now, when we have capture history turned on and I try to move something like the tire, I have to either capture its position or revert back to its original location. And the reason this is important is because each component contains its own coordinate system. For example, the rim's coordinate system, if I move it, sticks with the rim. This is exactly how Fusion 360 calculates our joints and where components are inside of our canvas. So reverting that position is an important consideration when we're talking about mechanical assemblies. And at this point, you might be thinking, we haven't even touched on base features yet. Why are we going through all of this stuff to learn about the coordinate system and components and capturing history? Well, the big difference and the reason why you might choose to use a base feature is if you want to quickly conceptualize a design, maybe not worry so much about sketches and features, but you still want to have a mechanical assembly. So if I wanted to use direct modeling techniques, of course I can do it directly on here. I can use press pull or delete or resize any of these features, make adjustments to the design, and it's fine, but it captures that inside of my timeline. Now if I want to do that, perfectly fine. If you don't, that's where the base feature comes in. So now that we sort of understand a little bit about components, bodies, capturing position, and capturing our history, let's go ahead and create a base feature. Under the Create menu, at the very bottom, we have Create Base Feature. When we create a base feature, what we're doing is we're going into a direct editing mode. This limits the number of tools that we have access to. We still have most of the solid features and most of the surface features, but you'll notice that none of the other toolbars are available. When we look at our Create menu, you can see that we've got some options, things like Find Features. That doesn't typically appear when we're just talking about capturing the design history in the normal context. If you turn off Design History, that Find Features will actually show up. There's also some other options under Inspect that are available when you're not capturing design history. Things like Validate. 
Now these tools are available now, but again, you really may have never used them before and you might never use them in the future. But just important to note that those are now available. From here, if we decide to make a new part, and I'm just gonna go ahead and create a sketch. I'm gonna create a rectangle just off in space. I'm gonna extrude it and create a solid body from it. You can see that inside of my browser, it's showing an extrude. Now this extrude feature, if I right click, I can dissolve it, which gets rid of it from my browser. I still have the solid body here. This thing is still a body. It still exists in my design. We just aren't really keeping track of what we did to create that. If I come back and say, add a couple fillets to the corners and say, okay, that fillet feature appears inside of my browser. And again, I can right click and dissolve it, but the fillet feature actually has an edit option. Now this is a little misleading because we're not actually editing the fillet. What we're doing is we're selecting the face and we're offsetting it. So that offset face is similar to using press pull or to using the offset face tool. It just shows up under the fillet here and we can right click and we can dissolve that as well if we wish. Once again, the important thing here is none of this is being captured in the timeline. If I finish the base feature, I just have this base feature in my timeline. It's a body that exists. I can convert it to a component if I wish. Now it can be moved around because it has its own coordinate system and we can revert its position. All the while maintaining the fact that it is a base feature. Now, if we want to, we can also make adjustments to it directly here. We can begin to model and add elements such as a fillet and capture those in our timeline. But we can also go back to the base feature at any point in time and edit the base feature. This means that we can add or change or potentially remove features from that base object without capturing that history. And when we okay that, you can see the fill is still valid because I haven't made any drastic changes. So once again, this workflow is pretty unique to Fusion 360. And the main reason why I would choose to use a base feature is if I wanted to quickly conceptualize something and not really clutter up my timeline by capturing all the sketches and features that were used. This allows me to create that sort of direct modeling approach without losing the ability to have joints and moving components around and capturing their position. So if you haven't seen the video where we talked about direct modeling for forms, let's go over quickly what that looks like. So in Fusion 360, by default, capturing history is gonna be on, so I'm gonna turn that off. Notice that my create forms disappears, but now I have my mesh and my form tools listed up here directly. This is because when working in direct editing mode, we don't have to go back and forth between our design and the T-spline or the forms environment. We can have them exist at the same time. If we were to create a box and just create something very basic, once we decide that we want to turn this into either a solid or a surface, what we need to do is go to our utilities and select convert. We pick the T-spline body, we're converting it to a B-rep, and we say okay. Now the important thing here is that the form body still exists at the same time as the solid body. And the reason you might want to do this is if you want to make some changes to the design and you want to capture it inside of your, your timeline, in your history. But remember, we don't have a timeline when we're direct modeling. But what this allows us to do is create multiple iterations that allow us to convert this to solids or surfaces at any point in time in the design. So we can go back and forth and maybe decide on which version of this body we like. Again, there is no feature captured in the timeline because we're direct modeling. This means that we need to think about and plan ahead whenever we start to make these changes. But just like with anything else in Fusion 360, there are going to be pros and cons to each of these workflows. We can do things like copy and paste this body. So for example, if I select paste, now I have an exact copy of that body and I can make adjustments to it. For example, if I want to crease this edge. When I select crease, I can now use my utilities and convert this to a solid body, maintaining the fact that I have my original form body, I have the copied version where I made adjustments, and I've got the solid converted version of that, as well as the solid converted version of all of the others. Now, this can get a little cumbersome once you start creating multiple bodies and start having multiple copies, but it can be a very helpful direct modeling workflow, especially for conceptual design. Now, me personally, I prefer to leave the timeline on, but it can become problematic, especially when your designs become really complex. 
I have a couple designs where we have thousands of sketches and hundreds of features, and it becomes very difficult to go back through and try to make adjustments to features very early on in the timeline. And oftentimes that ends up breaking something downstream, even if you plan ahead. So as you get into these complex models, think about whether or not a direct modeling approach works for you. And if you still need a mechanical assembly with joints, think about using base feature to create your objects and then simply keeping those in their sort of direct modeling form. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. If you'd like to see more videos talking about workflow and the differences between the workflows, let me know. I have some plans to create those, but again, they're really long videos and I'm not really sure how helpful those will be in the long run. If you wanna join the Discord server, please send me an email, support at cadjucator.com. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.